Hi, welcome back to the shop. Thanks for stopping in. This video we're going to make a, a bowl out of a piece of butternut. It's a can that I've had for a little while here now. It's nice and dry. It is 11 and a quarter inches wide. So I'm going to saw that off at 11 and a quarter long. center between these corners. Put a hole in the center for the woodworm screw. Okay, so I cut this to length, I took it over the bandsaw and just roughly made it round so it's a little bit better in balance. I'm just start roughing the outside in here. See, I'm cutting into the grain now, which really isn't the best idea, unless it makes it rough. So I'm going to swap directions here and go the other way. See how much smoother this is going uh, down the grain and not pushing up into it. Speed up significantly now because it's much more balanced than it was. Okay, so that's getting close enough now. I do have a little bit of out of bounce on the top, so I'm just going to bring that back into true. And that's why I always check first.
face is good now. Okay, so we're all nice and round. No flats left at all. I love the green in this stuff. It's, and it's soft. It cuts beautiful. Beautiful. Clean tenon now it needs to be super a little smaller than that. So I usually like to turn to mortise in bowls, but butternut is super soft. And what I found with it is when you expand your chuck into a mortise, lots of times it'll crack the bottom of it. And it might not in this one because the greens. The grain is open, but it's not too bad. But I'm gonna to to take no chances and go with that. All right, now I'm gonna clean up a few of these little tool marks. With a very sharp scraper. in this so it shouldn't take long to sand. I'm going to sand off camera and be back when we flip it around. All right so I got to sand it up to 400 grit. Just going to take some denatured alcohol, wipe off the dust from the sandpaper. So that's a regular Yorkshire grit. Now we'll go to microfine. I've never used Yorkshire grit on this type of wood before and it really seems to go into the wood good. It's uh, had to put a lot on just to get just to get some to, to work. It seemed to go right into the pores. Okay, so the outside's done. I'm just gonna lock up the spindle, unthread it off the woodworm screw.
I'm just going to clean up these tool marks before I take that center down any farther. Few tool lines in here to sand out. I don't dare turn them out. That's just asking for a catch. All right, so I'll hit this with some sandpaper, and I'll be back when I'm finished. All right, we're all sanding back up to 400 grit. That can be the abrasive paste. I don't know why on video this always sounds like the paper towel is really stiff and scratchy, and it's not. But you can hear the grit in the, in the abrasive paste working though. Just sand it up really quickly. And this, the trick to sanding more quickly is to take the coarsest grit that you're gonna start with and get everything out with that grit. So that all the subsequent grits that you use, all the finer grits, all they're doing is taking out the lines from the previous grit. They're not, no tear out, not taking out any tool marks, get everything on that very first grit. And then <clears throat> going through, and don't skip grits on the way up to to wherever you're going to get to, but it, it really goes fast if you do all the work with that first that first one, the most coarse grip. There's a ton of videos out there on sanding and how you should do it. Huh, caught it for once. Wood with grain like this is deceptive because when it spins you think there's lines in it and there's not. It's just the grain of the wood you see going around. It's kind of funny wood too. The sap wood, this, this is a sap wood and the hardwood starts here but it just keeps getting darker to the center which is kind of cool. All right now we we'll go with some microfine. Go the other direction this time. Go through a few different things in the mix over the next few weeks, be turning for the next few, I guess, but because I do have some things that I have to make. But i um, got some cutting boards that I need to make, some fancy cutting boards, and a few other little projects that I need to make. And uh, I'd be curious to know what you think about different things on the channel. It isn't an exclusively turning channel, it is a woodworking channel, although it is mostly turning. But uh, I'd be curious to know what your thoughts are on that. Is there anything you'd like to see me do? Just drop it in the comments. While I'm finishing this up, thanks uh, to everyone who's subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing that. I would appreciate that very much. And hit the like button or dislike, whichever your opinion of the video is. And I apologize for the background mess in this video. We had to we had to actually prefab an outhouse for my camp in this uh, in my shop this weekend, and all this 
all the cuttings and actually the outers are still sitting back there. We haven't got a chance to take it out yet, but made a mess. Coming off. Make sure the outside's good. Nothing wrong with that. We finish up with hamster sheen, and for once I actually found my hamster sheen opening screwdriver right where I left it. Imagine. And I'm going to do inside and outside now. And then we'll flip it over and turn the bottom off. Get this started. Speed things up. Get a good buff on it. You gotta be careful not to get too much on that first coat too. It's kinda you gotta build it up, not go for the gusto at once. There, a nice coat all over, now we can turn it up. Once you get that melted in good, you don't want to just back off on the pressure on your cloth. Just give it a nice light polish on the top. Love the green in this stuff. Okay, so because this bowl was too big for my Novichucks um, from my coal jaws, and I don't have a set of long wear chucks yet, um, she used a piece of kitchen countertop which was cut out of a sink a long time ago, backed on a three quarter inch plywood, drew a circle on the plate, centered up the bowl, put a half a dozen hot milk glue spots around it, and uh, that is typically enough to hold it on. You don't want to go too much because sometimes the glue will stick to the surface and you're going to buff it back off again. But if you let it harden enough, it's not too bad usually. So very carefully, we'll turn the bottom off this. I'm just using a little quarter inch bowl gouge with the swept back grind. Tail stock's up obviously with there's no there's no point in it. It's just there to keep things in place for me. Now I'm gonna take a pointed tool and get that in as closely as I can before I take the tail stock away. And you can see that I can stop that tail stock, it's not on there very hard. And the reason it's not on there very hard is because if you push that bowl and flex the lip of it very much, you can break this you can break the adhesion of the glue. So that's just just there, and that's all. Alright, now I take this away. Gonna give this an extra check to make sure we're still good. Anchored okay. There. there we go. It's up a little. And now we will very delicately take that last little bit off. showed this before but when you are at this point 
when you cut, get you in here a little bit. There you go. When you cut this lid, this lip, and get a surface for your for your bevel to run on, push it into the bowl so that you're holding it against the faceplate. Needs just a little more off the center. Perfect. There, if you can manage that, then you do not need to take a chisel and knock it down off and sand it by hand. Another caution when you're working with wood that's just soft and light is you got to be really careful on your edges that you don't get any up and over because it marks super easy. Okay, so done sanding with sandpaper, put some abrasive paste on now to get finished up. A lot of bowls I put a little design in the bottom, some rings or something like that, but this one I'm not going to, it's got a really straight grain right there. It is, it is soft wood, and I know that's just going to be a, a... It's not going to give me a good clean cut. It's not going to look nice. So I'm going to forego that one on this piece. Now we get a good hold on it. We turn the speed up. There we go. Okay, now for the dismount. It's going to be kind of hard for you to see. But basically, all I'm going to do from this side that I'm on. Not this side over here, but I'm gonna just slide my chisel underneath this and give it a, a twist just like that to crack that that bead on that glue while I hold on to it at the same time. And you want to be really careful to hold all your pressure onto the countertop because you don't want to stab your bowl. Okay, so you can hear that where it broke free. Now, so you can see, come off pretty clean. There's a tiny little spot right there just to take off. But you can see it comes off very clean. Now just a rub with a cloth will bring that back and I'll show you that in a second. But here's a piece that's on right here. Make sure that's focused okay. And it basically pops right off. Like that. I'm just gonna buff these sides with a piece of paper towel. And that goes away. And that's what you can do if you don't have a long worth chuck or a big enough set of cold chucks. Okay, so just to give you an idea of how light butternut is. This is ten and a half inches across. It's almost four inches deep. The walls are just a hair over a quarter of an inch thick. So zero grams. But the whole thing weighs three hundred 
and 40 grams. That's pretty light. All right, well, thanks for sticking with me. I'll put some stills up at the end. Um, again, to anyone who subscribed, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and share it. I'd appreciate that as well. We'll see you next time. Thanks.